Many of you are probably wondering why in the world I have a frog on here. We talk about a frog as being an amphibian because it lives on land and water. Well, today we're going to talk about amphoteric substances, which means it's a substance which behaves as both an acid and a base. So amphoteric and amphibian have something in common. So first, water acts as an acid and a base. So what is amphoteric? Amphoteric is simply a substance that can behave as either an acid or a base. It can behave as either one. So it behaves as either an acid or a base. For example, water is the most common amphoteric substance. So when you think about amphoteric, you can always think about water. So when you think of the reaction of water, if you have water, you don't think about this, but water actually reacts with itself. It both donates a proton and accepts a proton. So you could say one of these waters here is an acid, and the other one is a base. Because if we look on the other side, one of the products is a hydronium ion, which is a water that accepted a proton. And one of those is a hydroxide ion, which is a water without a proton. Something else that may be familiar to you is the idea of an ion product constant. We've actually used this formula before. Kw equals 10 to the minus 14th, which is equal to the hydronium ion concentration minus the hydroxide ion concentration. So if you're wondering, where did we get this formula? It's from this reaction that we see here of the hydroxide and the proton or the hydronium reacting together. So let's look at some reactions where water acts as both an acid and base when it's not with water. So let's think about water as a base. So when we put water with an acid such as this is nitrous acid, we see that water accepts a proton. So here we'd say water is a base. And then we'd say that would be our acid. Now a couple things I'd like you to look for as we're going through all these reactions here is one thing, the reaction, every one that we put, the reaction will be balanced for atom and for charge. For example, the charge on the reactant side of this is going to be zero, and the charge on the product side is, is zero as well, because if we take both charges for this, which we, if we look at the charge for this is plus one and minus one, we sum those together, it's zero, which is equal to the charge on the other side. Also, if we add up the, the hydrogens, there are one plus two, three hydrogens, which is equal to the number of hydrogens on the product side. There's one nitrogen, one nitrogen on the product side. We have one there. And then also we add, and there's three, three oxygens, so one plus two is three oxygens. So this will be true for each reaction. It will be balanced for atom and charge. The other thing you want to watch for is a type of an arrow. This is a equilibrium arrow, which means that it's not a strong acid or a strong base in this reaction. Let's look at the next one. How does water act as an acid? This means it's going to be donating a proton. Well, for water to act as an acid, it simply needs to be reacting with a base. And so here we have uh, water reacting with a nitrite ion. And so here water is going to be an acid, and the nitrite ion is going to be the base. And you see on the other side, when water's lost a proton, we have a hydroxide produced and then we have nitrous acid. Now since this is hydroxide produced in this reaction, this would be a basic solution. And up here at the top, since we have a hydronium produced, this would be an acidic solution. So I always look at the product to see if it's acid or base. If there's a proton or hydronium, it's acidic. If there's a hydroxide, it's gonna be a basic solution. What are some other amphoteric substances besides water? A common one is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, you can get that just by putting sodium bicarbonate, because sodium dissolves in water, into a solution of water, and you'll end up with a bicarbonate solution. But bicarbonate's also in our blood, if you think about another place you might find it. So bicarbonate acts as a base. Now how does it do this? When you put bicarbonate with water, it can accept a proton from water, so the proton goes from water to the bicarbonate. That means the water is the acid, and bicarbonate is the base. What happens on the product side, you see you have carbonic acid. Now this is actually unstable. It doesn't stick around for very long. And a hydroxide solution. Bicarbonate also can act as an acid. How does it do that? It donates that proton. So if you put bicarbonate with water, it, will, it is possible for that hydrogen to leave from the bicarbonate. So we see the hydrogen could leave here and go to the water, and it produces hydronium plus a carbonate. Actually, do both these reactions occur? Yes, they do, but they don't always 
occur in equal amounts and actually usually they don't occur in equal amounts and if if you were to put a baking soda solution together and were to test this pH it's actually is a basic solution and that's because this reaction right here predominates over the acidic reaction that's something we don't need to be worried about but just in case that you're wondering or if you know that a bicarbonate solution is basic the reason being is because the top reaction predominates over the one at the bottom so let's look at some other situations what would be things that aren't amphoteric so that means they can maybe accept a proton but not donate or donate a proton but not accept. So they do one of the things but not, bo uh, not both. For example, nitric acid. This would be an example that's of something that acts as an acid but it does not act as a base. For example, you put nitric acid in water, notice this is a completion reaction because this is a strong acid so I have a, a one-way arrow. Every single proton from that nitric acid goes to water and makes hydronium so this is a great acid. It does an awesome job at donating protons. But this does not act as a base. Nitric acid, there is no place for that proton to go. So if you put nitric acid and you add an acid to it, there is no reaction. One way to think about that is if you, if you think, what is the charge on the nitrate? A nitrate is actually NO3 with a minus one charge. That means it can accept one proton. It cannot accept two. So go by the charge of the anion or the negative portion and that tells you how many protons you can tip, typically add to a substance. So let's look at something that acts as a base but not an acid. So here I have phosphate. Phosphate has a negative three charge. So this means it's great at accepting protons. So this actually acts as a base. So phosphate plus a proton gives us hydrogen phosphate. Now notice a couple things here, like I've said, um, the reason this is a one-way arrow is we've just added what we call a strong, we str added a strong acid to it, which we see right there. And notice that the, the uh, net charge on each side is equal. We have a when you add a minus three and a plus one, you get minus two, which is equal to the product side. So this acts as a base, does a great job of, of accepting protons. But phosphate does not act as an acid. It has no protons to donate. So there is no reaction. There's no protons that are ever donated from phosphate though so this is not possible for this to act as an acid and once again we said it has no proton to donate next uh, you may have conjugated verbs before you may have talked about a conjugate in math before but what is a conjugate base that's a different idea that we've talked about in chemistry a conjugate base is simply the the part that is left behind after the acid loses its proton so today we're going to talk about the strength of conjugate bases, like which base is stronger. So here's this, uh, the main phrase that goes with this, and this is what you want to write down and definitely remember. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So what does that mean? Let's look at some examples that should make sense. For example, if you look at HCl, first of all, you need to remember what are the strong acids, what are the weak ones. HCl is definitely a strong acid. So since it's a strong acid, its conjugate base is chloride. This is a conjugate base. Remember, we, we just put CB here for conjugate base. This is a conjugate base of a strong acid. HCl is a strong acid. That means Cl is weak. It does nothing. It doesn't do a very good job at accepting protons. Remember, bases accept protons. So chloride ion does a horrible job at that. The strong acid has a weak conjugate base. It really doesn't do much with water. Let's look at the opposite situation. So if I were to put that chloride ion with water, there would be no reaction because it is a conjugate base of a strong acid. So let's say the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. So let's look at a weak acid. So if you look at hydrogen fluoride, remember hydrogen fluoride is a weak acid. And notice once again, I demonstrated that with the type of arrow I have here. The arrow is an equilibrium arrow. And then I have a fluoride ion. This is a conjugate base. Remember we could label this as the acid and this will be the conjugate base of that acid, so I'll move to CB there. Since this is a conjugate base of a weak acid, that conjugate base is going to be fairly strong. So if I put fluoride ion with water, it actually reacts. It does a great job of accepting that proton, so you end up with hydrogen hydrofluoric acid, but it's going to be basic because you formed hydroxide. Let's look at some more situations. What are some conjugate bases? What you need to remember are the conjugate bases 
are that are weak are basically the anions of all the strong acids. So the ones that we're going to count for this would be chloride ion, bromide ion, iodide ion, hydrogen sulfate, nitrate, and perchlorate. Remember we said there's six strong acids, six, and so if you take the proton away, what, le what is left is a weak conjugate base. So it means every single one of these will not react with water. And last, what are the strong conjugate bases? Basically, all other conjugate bases are considered strong, and all of those would react with water. Let's look at some questions here. Which of the following bases have strong conjugate acids? So let's look at some examples. The first one, HNO2. That is a actually a strong conjugate base, but it has a weak conjugate acid, so that one would be no. So let's put a little X like here for this one is no. Uh, the next one, bromide ion is from hydrobromic acid, which is a strong acid, so this would have a strong conjugate acid, and the ones that we're putting a check by would not react with water. One more, hydrogen sulfate ion. So what happens, this conjugate acid is strong, so this would not react with water to accept a proton. Let's do another example. And lastly, sulfate. Remember sulfate we get from the second ionization of sulfuric acid, and the second ionization does not go completely, and so this one actually does a pretty good job of accepting protons, so this one is, does the conjugate acid is HSO4 minus, which is not strong. It's not sulfuric acid, it's not H2SO4. The last one, phosphate ion. Would that have a strong conjugate acid? No, because the conjugate acid for that would be H. PO4 2 minus, and that is a weak acid. Let's look at another question. Which of the following are strong bases or strong conjugate bases, if you want to be specific and think about the reaction? Acetate ion. Notice that's not a strong acid, so we would say it is a definitely a strong conjugate base. So for this one, yes. Next one, fluoride ion. Remember, hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, so this would definitely be a strong conjugate base. Yet another one. Good job. Let's keep going. This is a perchlorate ion. Remember, perchlorate is a strong acid, so this means this is a horrible, weak conjugate base. So this one would not work at all, so we're going to put an X there. Let's do another example. What about iodide ion? Iodide ion is from hydroiodic acid. Hydroiodic acid is a strong acid, and therefore this is going to be not a very, it's not going to be a strong base at all. It's going, to, it's going to be horrible at accepting protons. It will not react with water. It will accept no protons. And lastly, this is chlorite. Remember, chlorite is from uh, chlorous acid. Chlorous acid is a weak acid, so this means this is a strong conjugate base. So there we go. I love chemistry. I, I love chemistry. I love chemistry.